Hi, it's Taylor T. Carlson, and today we are mourning the loss of one of rock and roll's all-time great drummers, Frankie Benelli, probably best known for being the classic drummer for Quiet Riot, who played on classic hits like Come On, Feel The Noise, Mama, We're All Crazy Now, Metal Health, Condition Critical. The list goes on, but they were the band that put heavy metal on the map back in the early 80s, and... Frankie Benelli, who tragically lost his battle with cancer at age 68 about a week ago, was one of the greats. I had the luxury of seeing him perform and meeting him on several occasions, and it's a major blow to the world of hard rock and heavy metal. My deepest sympathies are with his wife, Regina Russell Benelli, his daughter, Ashley Benelli, and his bandmates, including the likes of bassist Chuck Wright and guitarist Alex Grossi. This video is going to be my personal tribute to Frankie Benelli, and it's going to be broken into a few parts. I'm going to show off a few of my pieces from my Quiet Riot collection, as well as some other Frankie Benelli-related items. I'm going to talk about a few of my personal memories of meeting him and seeing him in concert, and I'm even going to give a few of my recommendations as to what some of the best items from his long discography are, because it's certainly not limited to Quiet Riot. Several years ago, Quiet Riot put out the documentary film, Well Now You're Here, There's No Way Back, which talked about the history of the band leading up to the death of singer Kevin Dubrow, as well as the aftermath in which they tried to replace him and revive the band with Frankie calling the shots, doing what he could to try to revive the group. I actually donated to the Kickstarter fundraiser they did for this, and I got several items for doing so. I think I donated at the... Uh, $250 level. Bear in mind, this was about a decade ago, and it was about five years or so ago the movie came out, but one of the things I got was this shirt here, which has Frankie's silhouette right there, the name of the movie, and then the URL. And then on the back of the shirt, it even says, I helped make this movie. This was only given out to people who donated and backed the Kickstarter. They also gave out to the backers of the documentary stickers that had the movie logo and art on it, and several other items as well. Probably the most noteworthy item, of course, is a DVD copy of the movie. Here's the front cover. Frankie actually autographed this, as did uh, Regina Russell, who directed the film and, after its production, of course, married Frankie Benelli. There's the back cover, and this is a great watch for anyone who's a fan of classic heavy metal bands. I'm not going to spoil too much of what they go into in there, but I think any fan will be impressed with the movie itself. Here's the actual disc of the film. And then I'll show off a few of the other items that I got for back in the Kickstarter, as well as a few other things from my collection. I got this uh, bag with the movie logo on it as one of the donation gifts. I, I don't even think this was actually listed on the tier, so this was almost kind of like a bonus item. So that was... Very nice. Got this lanyard from the 1999 World Tour, and on the back is Frankie's signature. I was also sent this CD single of stuff from the Guilty Pleasures album. This, of course, also autographed by Frankie. One of my favorite things that they sent me was a copy of an obscure 1990s album that they recorded called down to the bone. This is signed by, also by Frankie Benelli. And when I met Carlos Cavazzo, their classic guitarist a few years ago at a gig out here in Vegas, I got him to autograph it as well. So that's a favorite item from my collection. And then this was not something I got for back in the Kickstarter, but this is my Rock Candy Records CD copy of Metal Health, which I got signed by Rudy and Carlos. Sadly, I never got Frankie to autograph this one, but Still a favorite item in my collection. Here's the back cover. You can see the classic lineup there together. And this I also did not get signed by Frankie, but I got it signed by a few other performers. This is my Huronade vinyl. You can probably see this in the background in a lot of my videos, but I've been taking that around to shows over the years, trying to get a lot of the participants to sign it. Sadly, a lot of these guys, including Frankie, are no longer with us, but it's definitely up to us to keep their memories alive. I've also got... Several of my records, which Frankie and a few other guys from the band autographed several years ago. If you look at Frankie's signature, you'll, you'll notice he put R.I.P.K.D., his tribute to the late, great Kevin Dubrow. And 
He also sent me this 8x10 photo as part of the Kickstarter. Nice photo of him from the old days. And then this mini poster, which is also signed by Frankie. I also said I'd share a few of my memories of Frankie Benelli just when I've seen him perform over the years and a few of the times that I've met him. First time I saw him play was at a concert at the Sunset Station Outdoor Amphitheater. This was probably 2011, 2012, and they had uh, Scott Vokun on vocals at the time. He wasn't with the group for very long, but did a pretty good job singing. And Frankie Benelli, behind the skins, was always right at home, right in his elements, and he beautifully proved it on that night. I didn't actually meet him that night, but about a year or so later, out at Vamped, which is one of the venues here in Vegas, if you're not a Vegas local and not familiar with the places to go out here. I went out there and actually saw him perform with a Led Zeppelin tribute band and my buddy Lynn and I were out there and we both got to meet him before the show. He signed my records, took pictures. Just an all-around nice guy who appreciates the fans and is an all-around good human being as well. Something beautifully demonstrated on that night. Again, like I said, he was playing with a Led Zeppelin tribute band and and John Bonham is a tough man to pay tribute to, but Frankie Benelli was one of the few men certainly up to the tasks, as he proved on that night. I saw Quiet Riot again in 2014, again out at Vamped, and this time around it was the lineup of the band that had Jizzy Pearl of Love Hate on vocals, and the night was one of the highlights of the year for me. Once again, I did get to meet Frankie afterwards, and he was his usual nice guy self, very humble, even after being tired from a night of pounding the skins like there was no tomorrow. He still made time for the fans. and It's one of the reasons I absolutely love this guy and a lot of great memories that night. In 2016, there was a rock and roll awards show here in town over at the Eastside Cannery Hotel Casino and there were several artists being paid tribute to and one of the groups in attendance was Twisted Sister. Unfortunately, by this point, their drummer AJ Perro had passed away, so for the two songs that they performed that night, who did they get to play drums? Frankie Benelli. And it was, for me, the best performance of that evening, even though there were plenty of other high-profile artists and performances going on there. This even led to a lot of widespread rumors as to whether or not Frankie Benelli would become the new drummer for Twisted Sister, because he did such a damn good job that night. The last time that I ever saw or spoke to Frankie Benelli was in October of 2017, at the Hard Rock Cafe in Hollywood. This was for the Rock Gods Hall of Fame Awards they were holding there. And I'd gone to the ceremonies this organization had done in Vegas the previous few years, but they moved it down to California this year. I actually took, uh, I actually took some days off from work to go down there for the events. And I got to stand near the red carpet and just talk to all the people being honored and you know take some photos and the likes. I was doing an article for Z Rocker, which is the website that I do all my written reviews for, and one of the guys getting an award, of course, was Frankie, and he came over, I talked to him briefly, just told him who I was, and this is a guy who's met all kinds of people over the years, talent, performers, fans, etc., and I told him, you know, I'm Taylor Carlson from Vegas, and we've met a few times before, and I didn't think he'd remember me or not, but immediately after that, he said, oh yeah, I know who you are, thanks for all those articles you write. And with all the people he's met, I couldn't believe that he actually remembered who I was. The guy was just a class act all the way. And even on his Facebook page, he was always very active, you know, right up until his latter few months and his struggles that he had to deal with. This was a rocker who loved his fans, who loved rock and roll, who always played with enthusiasm and I don't think any further explanation is really required. If you've ever seen this guy perform, if you've ever met him, you know what kind of a guy he was. Now to finish off this tribute, I just wanted to talk about a few of the highlights in Frankie Benelli's discography and a few other recommendations because his career certainly goes beyond Quiet Riot, which a lot of people don't really realize. Of course for this list, we will start with the Quiet Riot stuff. I just showed you guys the documentary here. Well, now you're here. There's no way back. This is definitely a worthwhile watch because you don't only get to see Frankie Benelli trying to put the band back together, but you get to see some scenes of his domestic life, and that's especially interesting as well. As far as the albums go, everybody knows the Metal Health album. It's the album that put heavy metal on the map 
first heavy metal album to top the pop charts. Everyone knows it for the tracks, Metal Health, and of course, Come On, Feel the Noise, which is a cover of an old Slade song. But there's a lot of other great deep tracks on this album, like Breathless, Loves a Bitch, Don't Want to Let You Go, Thunderbird. I love this album. This is one of my favorite albums of all time by any artist. And it was followed up by two other pretty solid albums, Condition Critical, which largely followed the same format and created some tunes that were nearly as memorable, including things like Another Slade Cover, Mama We're All Crazy Now, and then tunes like Party All Night, Condition Critical, and Sign of the Times. The follow-up to these two was Quiet Riot 3, actually the fifth Quiet Riot album, but the third domestic and international release. The first two Quiet Riot albums with Randy Rhodes were only released in Japan, but those did not feature Frankie Benelli on drums, so those are a story for another day. Quiet Riot 3 moves in a little more of a synth-pop direction, but I like the fact that they tried to mix things up and didn't just rehash the mental health formula again. Tracks like Put Up and Shut Up, The Wild and the Young, and Twilight Hotel are some of the highlights of their career. Twilight Hotel might even be my all-time favorite Quiet Riot song, and that's really saying something. The last thing I'll say about Quiet Riot releases here is the QR album from 1988. This was the only album that Quiet Riot recorded with vocalist Paul Shortino, formerly of Rough Cut. Shortino lives here in Vegas, and I've had the luxury of meeting him and seeing him perform several times. It's a shame he only got to do one album with Quiet Riot because it's really a damn good one, probably best known for the track Stay With Me Tonight, and of course you got Frankie's drumming throughout the whole thing, keeping it all together. Another great thing from the Frankie Benelli discography is the Hughes Thrall album from 1982. Glenn Hughes, probably best known for being in Deep Purple, while David Coverdale was also in the group, and then he was with Trapeze back in the early 70s, and the guy's definitely gotten around. Pat Thrall, definitely one of the unsung heroes of the music business. Those two guys came together to make this record, and Frankie Benelli drums on this album. He's not on every single track, but it's great to see that he was involved in some way with this album. Producer on the album was Spencer Proffer, who went on to produce all those classic 80s Quiet Riot albums, so in many ways that could be considered the beginning of a long-lasting collaboration there. Billy Thorpe, another great underrated rocker that Frankie Benelli got to play with. Benelli appeared on the East of Eden's Gate album from the early 80s prior to his time in Quiet Riot. Billy Thorpe, probably better known for his late 70s hit Children of the Sun, but he went on to have several other things, and it's great to see Frankie Benelli got to be on board for one of those releases. I just pointed out my Hearing record up here, and of course the, the anthem Stars that was created to raise money to help with hunger relief around the world remains the favorite of many a rock and roll fan, and it's worth rediscovering. Supposedly, Wendy Dio, Ronnie James Dio's widow, is going to reissue this, but there's been no new news on that front in quite some time, so still hoping we get that. It's also worth noting that Frankie Benelli actually played on one of Faster Pussycats tours in the late 80s, early 90s, when their previous drummer had been fired for drug possession. Unfortunately, he didn't plan any of their records, so there's not really anything I can add to this section, but that's just an interesting piece of trivia, so I wanted to go ahead and throw that in there, too. When you think of the band Wasp, usually you think of Blackie Lawless, maybe the likes of Chris Holmes and Johnny Rod, but did you know that Frankie Benelli actually appeared on several of their albums? the best of which being the 1989 record, The Headless Children. This was something of a turning point for Wasp, and it's a great record. Frankie Benelli gives one of the best drum performances ever heard on one of these classic Wasp records. Plenty of great tracks to be experienced here, and if you're a Wasp fan, if you're a Frankie Benelli fan, absolutely do not overlook The Headless Children record, one of my personal favorites. Another great supergroup not a lot of people know about is a group called Blackthorn, which existed pretty unknown for the most part in the mid-90s. Benelli was the drummer, and vocalist Graham Bonnet sang for the group. You probably remember him from groups like Rainbow, Alcatraz, Michael Schenker Group, and Bob Kulik, another guy who lived out here in Vegas, who had appeared on many albums by many bands, who unfortunately lost earlier this year, played guitar on the record as well. This album, called Afterlife, has some great music on there. 
pretty much everyone brings their A game on this one. There was a second unreleased Blackthorn album that got released several years later, and there's rumors as to whether it was Frankie or a drum machine that was used on that album. I don't really care one way or the other. Frankie was involved, and the records this group put out were great, and I definitely recommend them. Here's another interesting piece of trivia that you may not have known about Frankie and his long, illustrious career. You've heard the Billy Idol cover of Tommy James and the Shondells' Moni Moni. Did you know it's Frankie Benelli playing drums on that? Benelli was the drummer on the Billy Idol Don't Stop EP, appearing on all the tracks except for the edited version of Dancing With Myself, which was a Generation X recording, Billy Idol's old band. But a lot of people don't realize that Frankie Benelli actually did appear on Billy Idol stuff, including one of his earliest and biggest hits. It just goes to show how, how much Frankie got a rep. There are a ton of albums that Frankie has appeared on, and I certainly can't list them all here, but if you go online and look up his discography, you'll be impressed by how big it is. Did you ever have a chance to see Frankie Benelli live in concert? Did you get to meet him? Any memories that you'd like to share? Comment down below and let me know what you think. Also remember to subscribe to my channel for more rock and roll related content and like this video if you found it to be a fitting tribute to one of our all-time great drummers who unfortunately has lost his battle with cancer. Again, my sympathies go out to his friends, family, bandmates, and fans all around the world. I'm Taylor T. Carlson and I will see you in my next video.